here on this slide just a moment while I do a quick introduction again. Um, welcome everyone to the kickoff meeting for round 25. Um, we appreciate you being here. We just had everyone participating in a warm up question while we were waiting for the meeting to get started. As we move through this next slide, intro slide, please do continue to uh, engage in the poll. The link is in the chat. Um, and then after I do our introductions, we will go to the results of this poll. Um, so we will do that. So it is being recorded, as Jeff mentioned. And so, Jeff, if you could advance to the next slide, I will do the official opening and introductions. Again, everyone, welcome. Um, please do mute yourselves. Um, uh, just at the beginning of this meeting here, we will have an opportunity for questions and answers and would invite you very much to unmute and if you care to share your video as well. Um, welcome to our kickoff meeting for round 25 grantees. I'm Nikita Afaha. I'm the program manager for Affordable Learning Georgia. And we also have our uh, director here, Jeff Gallant. Uh, he's our program director. Jeff, do you want to say hi? Hi, everyone. How are you? <laughs> So more about Jeff coming up soon. Uh, he will go through a lot of our slides today. And so um, we will go ahead and uh, I think if we, I don't think we need to close the poll, but we can definitely go ahead and advance to the next slide. And if all is working correctly, we shall see ah, no responses. Okay, that's okay. I have the responses available for us here. I've got so, it. I'm going to bring this up on uh, my computer instead. Yeah, I have it, it open like, if you. Yep. Yeah, uh, so. You want to share? Yeah, I'm going to have to stop sharing this one and go to well, my screen. I'm ready to. Yeah, I'm ready to share it if you want. Okay, to go go right it. ahead then. Yeah, yep. yeah, we'll do that. So here we are, everyone. Here are our poll results. There you go. And uh, let me just make this bigger so I can see this part. Okay. So, uh, so as you can see, what do you need to have a successful grant project? We have all kinds of interesting uh, information coming in, and I appreciate you all uh, sharing and, and, and um, voting up. As you can see, the top one right now are the rules and the deadlines, and that is something that we will be addressing here today. Thank you so much. Um, time, resources is something that you would need, obviously. We could talk a little bit about that today. Expectations, due dates, thank you so much. Uh, Basically, you have everything you need on your end, but uh, as far as the scope of the work, but what else uh, can we help you with? And that's what today's meeting is going to be about as well. Um, needing a definitive timeline, clear expectations, absolutely, in terms of accessibility, Creative Commons licenses, uh, copywriting, hosting. I think that you will find today's meeting informative in that as well. So I'm glad that uh, um, everyone is, is, is also feeling the same. And we see some of the same things appearing as well. Timeline, expectations. Iterating the timeline seems like that is a theme here. Um, I'm so glad that some people are feeling very comfortable with no questions. That's awesome. Um, hopefully you can help uh, others who also may have done this before or haven't done it before. You can help them. Um, and then, of course, hiring student assistants um, is something we can talk about. Uh, expectations, of course, timeline, resources, expectations, due dates. There we are. So thank you so much for participating in the poll. As you can see, we all have some very common interests in our meeting today and um, I intend uh, to uh, wrap this up at the end as well and make sure that we have all of our questions answered but thank you so much for sharing that and so Jeff I'm going to stop sharing my screen and we'll go ahead to the next session next section and thanks everyone for participating in the poll okay yeah, so it looks like poll everywhere will not work with um, presenting in teams. So that that's something good to know for later on. Um, right. OK, uh, so the agenda today, uh, first, we're going to introduce ourselves. And because there are a lot of us, this is a very big round of amazing projects. Um, we'll be moving through that pretty quickly. We'll do a walking tour of the ALG website that will include where you have to go to find um, those important deadlines and reports. Uh, we'll have a little break and then uh, we'll introduce the uh, transformation folks. So we're doing research and continuous improvement first. Then we're going to go over grant procedures, but because we saw a couple of instances of confusion over Creative Commons, I've added a few things in there just to run down um, how Creative Commons licensing works and uh, how that makes stuff open. 
Um, and then uh, just open that up for questions and answers. So let's start off with our research grants folks. Um, we have three research grants this time around, including one uh, cross institution. Let's hear first from Christine Whitlock at Georgia Southern University uh, for you and your team. Um, hi, I'm not sure exactly what you want me to tell you, but I'm Christine Whitlock and I'm not sure. Who's oh, yeah. Up. Just introduce the uh, project members and what your research topic is. And my project members, I see Leah Williams on there and Shanaz Lange and also um, Nikki Cannon Retch our uber librarian that we have and and we are going to look at the impact of three previous alg grants on our organic chemistry sequence excellent um uli ingram uh, who is the project lead for a multi-institution project yeah hi um Hello. we are working with can you hear me yep Okay, perfect. Um, we're working with some professors from University of North Georgia. I myself am at Kennesaw. So it's myself, Dr. Ron Kong, and Dr. Patterson from Kennesaw, and then Dr. Amber Ignatios and Caddy Mobasher from UNG. And we're going to assess the effectiveness of OERs in our GIS courses. Excellent. Um, Jalu from Valdosta State. Hey everyone, I am Jia Lu. I'm the geoscience person at Valdosta State. Um, well, uh, my team is me, and uh, we will have uh, student participants later. Uh, our topic is racial and ethnic disparity in perception of OER uh, in science courses. Thank you. Excellent, and thank you. We have a lot of continuous improvement grant folks. Um, I'm going to start off uh, with April Abbott at ABAC. I know that April is traveling right now. I'm Hope Tool, and oh. I am one of the participants in the grant. It's me and April Abbott and Adam Anderson, um, Sheila McClendon, and Jan Gregus. And we are looking to, in our quantitative reasoning classes, replace an at-cost student um, problem-solving software, I guess, with what we're going to create with this grant. Excellent. Um, Noel Welch's group from Atlanta Metropolitan. Yes, thank you very much. Um, again, my name is Noel, and uh, me and my team members are very excited to join you. And what we will be doing, we will be developing a diagnostic math test for our math um, 1101 students, uh, those are the first year students who come in and we get a lot of students uh, with difficulty uh, in that class. And so uh, we're really excited about doing something that's going to help our students. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Clement Albert uh, from Augusta. Hey everyone, so my name is Clement Albert. We have Jason Weeks here with me. I'm extremely excited to have him on the team because he is a student who actually used the resources uh, that we developed a couple of years ago. So he knows them inside out and now he's joining the other side to help me improve them. And so it's resources about introduction to programming. Thank you very much. Thanks. That's that's going to be a, an excellent story too. Um, Andrea Allen from Clinton State. I'm there we go. <laughs> Sorry, I hit the mute button way too many times. Um, hi, I'm Andrea, and our project is for American government. We are going to be updating the OpenStax book to the latest edition, so working to get all those materials in line. But the kind of the big thing that we're looking to do is make some ancillaries for that book, including things like um, videos cool activities, um, all these things using different AI programs. So looking to make those really engaging, um, also really useful so that anybody from anywhere can use these things. So they're not going to be, you know, with the CSU stamp on it. So that's kind of our big um, addition that we're doing for this project. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, also from Clayton, let's hear from uh, Dennis Miller on Intermediate Spanish. Or the team, of course. It looks like De uh, Dennis may not be in. 
Uh, let's go on to uh, Ramisa Bryant Davis from Clayton State. Hi, Misa Davis. You said that very well, by the way. Most of the time I get some <laughs> variation of my name. Um, we are working on an interactive classroom management module, um, and I'm working with IT and the fine arts department. The fine arts department is um, they're creating the skits, so from the writing to the filming and the production and the editing and all of that, that will be embedded in these interactive classroom modules that IT will actually um, do their behind the scene magic to create for us. All right, um, let's hear uh, from Martiana Sega from East Georgia State. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. OK, um, uh, I'm from East Georgia. I work on Augusta campus and um, I'm working on this grant with um, Dr. Weddingkamp. He's on the Swainsboro campus. So our um, new grant is based on addition of new OERs for um, introductory biology one and also um, we we will try to uh, revise all the learning outcomes and make sure they match better with this uh, non-major biology. Um, and um, yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Todd Lindley from Georgia Gwinnett College. Hey guys, I'm here with David Jarrell and uh, we're publishing a new edition of our textbook that was last published through an ALG grant in 2018. We teach about 2000 sections of this course, not really, but it feels like that sometimes. <laughs> so all that to say, our book gets used a lot, but all of our instructors have adopted it. So this is a completely updated new version with a couple of new chapters as well. Thanks. Thank you. Excellent. Um, Yi Ding from uh, Georgia Gwinnett College. Anyone from Yi's team here? OK, um, we'll go to Bronson Long from Georgia Highlands. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Bronson Long from Georgia Highlands College, and my my team consists of Dr. Jamie Fagan, who is a historian, along with myself, and uh, two of our uh, specialists in the di digital media services. And as you may have heard, uh, American history is now under a citizenship category in the new core revision. And what we intend to do with this grant is to create a series of new lecture videos that really focuses on the concepts of citizenship. We also plan to build out some discussion questions and add primary source documents and, uh, and create really a quality assignment for our online classes that refocuses uh, the, everything on this new concept of citizenship. Thanks so much. And uh, Bronson, I used your uh, project as an example uh, for some Gordon State folks when I was talking about uh, what continuous improvement grants can be all about, because it was both about uh, expanding audiovisual content and about adapting stuff for core impacts. So it was really neat to have both of those in one project. Oh, fantastic. Uh, Thank you. Uh, Greg Mayer uh, and group from uh, Georgia Tech. Hello everyone, excited to be here. This is my first Affordable Learning Georgia grant, so I'm here to learn a whole lot. I am working on a team. Uh, I see Liz Holdsworth here, our librarian, to help us you know, look for resources that we can use. We've got uh, Hunter Lehman, I don't, I don't see him there, but uh, our team is looking at developing formative uh, assessments aligned with an OpenStax textbook so that we can replace our um, publish our online homework system and, you know, help make that final step towards uh, going completely textbook online homework free. All right. Thanks so much. Uh, let's hear from Heidi Eisenreich from uh, Georgia Southern. Anyone on Heidi's team? OK, uh, let's go on to Joseph Como from Georgia Southwestern. Hello, I'm Joseph Como. I'm a sociology professor at Georgia Southwestern State University, and I have uh, a great team of colleagues that I'm working with. 
uh, my other sociology colleagues, uh, Dr. Jamie McLennan, Dr. Dabalina Ghosh, and currently in the meeting with us is Mr. Robert Slanker, who has uh, expertise in video uh, uh, recording and editing and production. Um, I'm really excited about our project. It's kind of something that's built out of my hobbies. I, I'm a YouTube content creator for fun and have nearly half a million views across multiple kind of hobbyist sorts of things, but I also have a sociology YouTube channel. And I think I'm contractually obligated to say, smash the subscribe button to the sociology professor. Uh, but we're gonna create a series of intro to sociology videos that will be housed on the YouTube channel, five to eight minute quick hit instructional videos based on the OpenStax Intro to Sociology third edition text that will be openly available through YouTube. And uh, I've already have videos on that channel that are being used by other institutions. So hoping to continue it being something uh, that becomes a part, sorry, Intro to Sociology courses in the USG and beyond. All right, thanks so much. Uh, Joseph, if you don't mind me asking, um, which hobbies on YouTube are you are you posting about? All right, you asked. I, I'm an I'm a avid NFL fan. I'm an Arizona Cardinals fan. That's where I'm originally from. So I started a channel just to connect to that, and that's where most of my views have. Like, oh yeah, nearly four thousand wow. subscribers, almost half a million views on that channel. My sociology channel has about sixteen thousand views though, with four videos. So it's got a good start too. Yeah. Oh, excellent. All right, uh, let's hear from Taha Mizogi from uh, Georgia State. Hi. Uh, uh, hi, everyone. Uh, uh, our project, um, we are a team of five. Uh, we are going to work on uh, implementing online homework for uh, Physics 1, Calculus-based Physics 1. Excellent. Um, let's hear from Jamie Jameson from Kennesaw State. Is anyone from Jamie's team on the call? All right, uh, let's hear from Ling Yang Wang uh, and their team uh, from Kennesaw. This could be one of those cases where uh, their IT departments are often uh, on these grants and they may have uh, attended the last time around. Uh, so that may be the case, we'll be checking in. Um, Shirley Tian, uh, are you here from Kennesaw? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Hello. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, the Jimmy Jameson is also in, in our department. We have uh, two grants. One is for the undergraduate IT program and another one for graduate. So Jimmy Jameson is actually working on the uh, undergraduate uh, IT program. So they are revising four courses for undergraduate program. Uh, for our uh, for our program, we, we are update four courses uh, for MSIT program this, this time. And uh, I really want to thank you again and again <laughs> for ALG grants. So we start to work on that since uh, um, maybe 2016 or 15. So it's very early. And all the uh, all the our um, you know the master's program and undergraduate program are textbook free. So uh, that's really helpful for the student to save a lot of money on textbook. Um, yeah, uh, I think that's it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, and Uli, you're up again to talk about uh, the um, continuous improvement grant you've got for a few GIS classes. Yes, yeah, so we have a similar team. There are some different team members. So we have Dr. Ranbir Kang again, Dr. Mark Patterson, and then Professor Aaron Barito and myself. Plus, we put two student assistants into the budget that we want to hire and work with. So we're going to improve the three previous courses we have worked on with self-assessments. We have tried that before in the lowest level course, and we would like to port that to a different platform. Um, we're really wanting to monitor our DWFI rates and improve them or decrease them, I guess, um, increase the success rate. And so if the students can pre-study for our graded quizzes, we hope to achieve that. And then we'll also look at revising some of the assignment instructions to do more transparent assignment design on those. Yeah, um, okay. Uh, Nikita, are you there? I am, if I unmute, yes, sir. Okay, would you mind taking over for just a second? Um, yeah. Someone is not able to get in. I just want to make sure they have the right link. 
Yeah, sure, absolutely. So we'll continue on with our introductions. And so let's move on to University of Georgia with Donald Slugs. Are you here or have your team member? Wayne's not here, um, but I'm Jessica Jensen. I'm on the grant with him. Okay. And we are redoing a couple of our 2000 and 3000 level analytical chemistry labs. Very good. Keeping right along, we're almost done, you guys. So University of Georgia, Matthew. Hello, everybody. My name is Matt Sievert. I am a lecturer in Department of Chemistry at UGA. I'm joined here with Iman Abdelrahman, who's also a team member, and then many other team members, not on my grant, but at UGA. Uh, so what we're looking at is uh, revamping recitation materials and worksheets that we use in mandatory recitation sessions weekly. Um, in our general chemistry one course is looking at revamping clarity types of questions, extra practice sessions. So we found these recitation sessions to be really beneficial and very grateful for the ALG to continue uh, to invest in these sessions. So thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And, and Matt, it sounds like if you found them very successful, as other people have mentioned as well, as you're looking and seeing how your projects are impacting you, Looks like you might be needing to apply for the research grant next time, next round, to continue to uh, support the impact of your project. It's all very important. It all turns together. So, Sarah, for Univers University of Georgia, if you are available. Hi, I'm Sarah Blankenship. Uh, I'm working with Jessica Jensen to make some homework assignments for Chemistry 1210 to add some more structure to the course and go along with our low cost textbook. And we're also going to record a series of videos for the recitation sessions that allow students to work with real lab experimental data and learn some beginning data analysis. Thank you, Sarah. It looks like Jeff is back with us. So we're yep. with uh, still the last person at the University of Georgia. All right, uh, let's hear from Shelby Dickerson. Hi everyone, my name is Shelby. I'm here with my team members, uh, Dr. Nathan Thacker, uh, Nick Llewellyn, Mark Ilalucci, Bill Ellenberger. Um, and we are actually uh, supporting another ALG grant with Dr. Sue Ellenberger, who's also here, uh, where we are generating recitation materials for Organic One students. This uh, recitations is a relatively new addition to the organic program at the University of Georgia. And we're seeing a lot of success with it. So we really want to increase the amount of content we can provide. And in addition to the recitation materials, we will also be generating video content, short videos to help with topics and student understanding throughout the semester. All right, thank you so much. Um, BJ Robinson, uh, you are project lead for a couple of projects. Uh, would you mind talking about both of these at UNG? With pleasure and thank you very much. And hello, everybody. Um, I'm with the University of North Georgia Press and both of our projects respond to requests for two of our open textbooks. The first is World Literature One and we're going to be developing multimodal ancillaries for that, working with the co-editors. And the second one is going is with World History One um, and we've had many requests for an audiobook version of this, and we are going to try that for the very first time to develop an audio, open audiobook of that textbook. That's going to be really cool. This is the UNG Press first time doing an audio textbook. This is neat. Yeah, we're excited about it. Thank, thank you very much for making that possible. Oh, yeah. Okay, um, let's hear uh, also from UNG, John Bragelman. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is John Bragelman. I'm in the math department here at UNG, uh, specifically in our secondary math ed program, and we are developing resources for financial literacy. The Georgia Performance Standards rolled out new financial literacy requirements for secondary math teachers, and so the curriculum that we're developing is in response to that. Very cool. Um, let's go to University of West Georgia. So Crystal Shelnut and your team. Hi, everyone. I will be working with a team of three, Melissa Jackson and Bonnie Jett from our first year writing program and Mandy Campbell from our Institute for Faculty Excellence. And we will be creating a no cost digital handbook for our composition students. 
We'll be adapting some OERs. We will also be providing some of our own activities and exercises for our composition students. Thanks so much. Um, all right, let's go to uh, Danilo Balin, uh, from all, also from UWG. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, this collaborative project we're doing with uh, Dr. Beth Shepard of Ingram Library and Brian Roberts from the Institute of Faculty Excellence. Uh, our team aims to create ancillary materials for existing no-cost graduate level courses, that is visual and media literacy, digital photography, special topics focused on storytelling with visual media, and uh, another course on media literacy. These courses are designed to support instructional technology and school library media students pursuing master's and specialist degrees at the University of West Georgia. All right, and um, last on our CI grant list is Jim Bellin from University of West Georgia. Hey there, can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Um, so I'm I'll be working with uh, with uh, Rick Johnson, Kyle Carter, and Dr. Scott Gordon. And um, what we are doing is um, we realized in some of the classes where where students do work 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 with a lot of data data analysis like stats and quantitative skills um, that they can do it on a calculator, but we want to get them ready for, 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 for their careers in the real world um, using spreadsheets. And it's amazing how many students don't know how to use the spreadsheets. They'll literally like type numbers in and then calculate the answer, calculate that average on a cal calculator and type, type it in manually. They're like, no, the spreadsheet can do that. You know, they're like, what? Um, so we are creating um, some, some, some modules with with some some in, like instructional guides and spreadsheets and and finding some 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 really good data sets that students can can work with uh, that anybody can plug and play and in, in uh, D, D or D, 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 uh, D2L and use with these use with diff different classes. That's what we're working on. Thanks so much, um, Joy. I do not think you have missed your chance here. Um, I think you are part of the transformation grants list. Yes, yes. Um, hi to everyone who just joined us. Uh, there was a link out there that was not working, and those folks got in contact with me, uh, and I made sure that they had a working link. Uh, so everybody is on the list to be uh, here in this meeting, that's for sure. Um, but yeah, if you just got here, we were introducing con uh, continuous improvement grants projects. Uh, before then, we did research grants projects. The next thing that we are going to do um, is take a little bit of a walking tour of the ALG website. So I'm going to switch this over to my screen uh, to make that happen. And so that will take just a little bit here. And while Jeff is doing that switch, I just want to remind everyone that as he's continuing on, go ahead and drop your questions in chat and I'll address them as we go. All right. Um, so first of all, this is the Affordable Learning Georgia homepage. It's at affordablelearninggeorgia.org. Um, we have quite a few things on here for quite a few different folks. Um, there's a lot on here for our current grantees, but there's also stuff on here for folks who may be considering applying for a grant. Uh, people who have just learned about something called open educational resources and want to find out more. Um, people who are looking at our program and going, OK, but how much have you done over the past 10 years? Uh, we've got data uh, for that stuff, too. Um, the nav bar up here is the most important part. Uh, we've got our about, and this will tell you all about ALG, including our champions, and hello to our champions that are on the call. Thank you so much for participating. Um, our partner organizations, uh, some in the USG, some outside of it. And then uh, if you want to look at data stuff, that's in the R Impact page. About o OER, if anyone is very new to OER on your team, an overview of that can really help. We have a set of selection criteria for OER. Uh, we took it from both Quality Matters and uh, from BC Campus, BC Campus being uh, a really great open pioneer in trying to assess what it means to you to have a quality resource and, and going through a list of criteria that may help you to assess that type of thing. Um, 
over on our grant section, this is going to be very important to all of you. The first one is the overview. This one informs people about what our grants are about. That's for potential grantees. Apply for a grant. Obviously, these are for applying for a grant. Um, there is no reporting on there. Uh, there's nothing that you'll need uh, moving forward. When you are when you're applying for another one, if you want to, that's where you would go. The really important place is the Grantee Information Center. So you can type all of this in if you would like, and that's fine. Or you could just bookmark this and add it to your bookmarks bar so that every single time you ever have a question about uh, having to make a report, when are things due, it's all right here. And you can just click on that bookmark and you're all done. Um, so the upcoming deadlines, we try to keep this as current as we possibly can. Spring 2024's deadline is coming up. Do not worry about that deadline. Uh, no one on this call has to do a semester status report for spring 2024. If you did, it would read, we just got started, and that would be just about it. Uh, so you do not have to do a semester status report for that. Also, if you look over in the reporting guidelines, this tells you what you do need to submit. So if you have transformation grants, that's the only kind of grant that needs a semester status report. The final reports are due at the end of your final semester's deadline. And as we say down here, this final semester, it's going to be included on your service level agreement. You'll see the end date and you'll see the final semester uh, right in the wording of the SLA. So refer to the SLA if you ever uh, look at this page and go, yeah, but which semester uh, is our project ending in? That'll be on the SLA. Um, for continuous improvement grants and research grants, there is just a final report due at the end of the final semester. You do not have to do a semester status report. This is because a lot of continuous improvement and research grant projects, while they may have different phases to them, they're going to be quite predictable phases from a grant standpoint. We are working on these materials. They will be done by the final semester. Um, with transformation grants, there's a lot of meeting, reviewing, uh, trying to make things meet learning outcomes. Uh, there's some milestones that wind up getting sometimes pushed this way or pushed that way. That's why we do semester status reports for those folks. It's a check in to make sure that you're doing all right. We'll talk more about how these uh, forms look and what you're going to need in order to fill these out later. But just know that here, everything you would need if you're a continuous improved uh, grantee or research grantee is going to be below in this final report section. Um, if you are a transformation grantee, you'll need the semester status report part. So we have the online form. That's where you submit your report. There is a template here too, just to show you what it looks like. And should you be in a place where Google is not available, such as China, when you have to fill out a semester status report, the template is a way for you to email that to us as well. Um, final reports. Uh, so final reports are run through Zoho. They do not run through Google. There is an online form for all of these grants. It's all the same online form, but as you answer questions, the skip logic will send you to the right questions that you'll need to answer. There is a final report template for each one. You really want to fill this out first. Um, these are the Word documents that will include all of your narrative stuff. You can't really type in a narrative into the online form so well. You run into a lot of word requirements and that's just not very usable. So submitting the Word document as that final report is super important. So first you fill that out um, and it says that right up here. Complete your report using the template, save a copy. Then you submit your report using the online form. We ask some things on the online form that are in the template it's not to be redundant and, and uh, make anybody go crazy. It's more because we need those things in a spreadsheet format so that we can immediately export them so that we can share our data uh, and the impact that everyone is doing uh, with the world. So that's that's why we ask those questions in the online uh, form along with the template. 
Now the list of projects is down here. So just in case you want to double check this stuff and you know that your grant number is, uh, let's say uh, M230. I can do a uh, grant number search up here and it is not loading, so I will not uh, do it from that uh, angle. But at least I have this sorted by which final semester it's in. So this is spring 2024, right? Uh, here is the list of everyone whose final semester is spring 2024, and it has the due date right there. Uh, if you go into, let's say, uh, spring 2025 instead, now you're seeing a lot of these projects, 702, 713. These numbers will be very familiar for you, and these names will be very familiar to you. You just heard from folks. Uh, research grants do not have a course number attached to them because we're just not tracking that as part of a research grant. Some of you are researching things for particular courses. Others are not. That's OK. We're saying this is a research grant. We are answering research questions. Um, so that is uh, the grants list. We use Power BI for this. If you find any glitches like this grant number search, which I am going to have to uh, look over, let, uh, let me know. This is a very new thing. There's also some other information in here. Um, so uh, if you want to host things, we will help you out with that. We'll be putting them on OpenALG, which is our home for OER. We'll be indexing them in Galileo Open Learning Materials so that uh, every library interface and every like meta interface that brings all of the open stuff together um, can find it and grab it really quickly. Um, we will have the kickoff training uh, over here too. There will be the meeting recording and the presentation slides for the most updated one. Uh, and just a little bit oh, down here. Are. Yeah, thank you. About the uh, uh, grantees listserv. So yeah, um, that is the grantee information center, the place to be if you are a grantee. Stop doing stuff. Jeff, I'm going to. to... Jeff, let me just interrupt you for a second while you are, uh, are muting uh, some of the background noise. I yep. have a question um, from the chat that's related, and I want to move on before we get past the deadlines conversation. Yes. And making sure that summer does not count as a semester for reporting purposes, but I think it does. And I just wanted you to confirm before I left that answer in chat. When it comes to semester status reports for your for transformation grants, summer is a semester that counts. Um, it is often three different semesters at your institution. That's not really important to us. It's a summer check in to make sure that we know how you're doing. Um, so if a, a lot of folks will actually take the summer to do a lot of the background work. So that's where the most interesting information comes out. We make that due date pretty late uh, in in the summer going into the fall just to make sure that you have enough time. Um, yeah, and then the fall is way at the end of December. Uh, if you have any issues meeting this deadline, let us know. Um, in the SLA itself, there's a 31 day delay built into it that is uh, tolerable. If it's past, if it's past that point, um, then what will happen is we would have to create an amendment that changes the wording on the SLA, which changes the final semester deadline. Uh, yeah. I, I somehow um, said the name of the voice recognition software, so that's why you heard that for a second. OK, so this is the Grantee Information Center page. Be sure to bookmark this. Uh, whenever report deadlines come around, you will want to know where this is. Um, also, there's plenty of resources if you ever have any uh, knowledge gaps on, let's say you wanted to customize and author some OER and you've never done that before. What do you need to know? Uh, what do you need to know about open licensing and copyright? There's even guidelines uh, for putting OER related work and open education related work into tenure and promotion, both from a faculty standpoint and from a departmental standpoint. Uh, there's also an overview of how to find OER. Um, there's also ways to just get right into our repositories. Um, there is that third option of having inclusive access materials. Those are sometimes low cost and those are sometimes not low cost. We have this here because we have uh, 
a pricing agreement with publishers to make that um, kind of a last resort. If you um, have looked at open, you've looked at no cost and you've looked at low cost and none of those meet that. So that's why that is there. Um, if you are putting your stuff into banner and when your courses are no cost or low cost, I really hope that you do. Uh, it helps us in knowing what's happening throughout the system. It also helps our research and policy analysis folks understand how affordable things are getting. Um, there is a whole guide to that in here, and it answers questions um, for things that you might not think about until you're suddenly uh, faced with them. So for example, do we include our optional materials in the syllabus? No, you do not. Uh, it's the things that are required. Um, only identify courses that meet those cost cap requirements. Uh, if you're using a resource in Anatomy and Physiology 1 and then Anatomy and Physiology 2, do we base our calculation on the cost divided by those courses? And the idea is no, because it depends per student. Uh, so that would not meet the course requirement. There's also things like, why is it uh, set at 40? Um, what about uh, attributes and academic freedom? And of course, it's really meant to raise awareness to students. It's not a requirement. Um, Things like interacting with vendors and third party stores, textbook rentals, ebooks, print copies of the text, uh, material. Uh, what if you don't require any materials for your class? Uh, what if you strongly recommend them? Um, what if somebody uh, put an attribute on your course as no cost, but then the instructor changes? Uh, there's a lot of intricate uh, questions that have to do with that stuff here. Note that this is administrative. We are not. Um, saying here's how to do it in banner because that's on georgia best side of things and that changes all the time and it's based on a vendor platform and that vendor platform tutorial stuff uh, has confidential markings on it sometimes so that is georgia best stuff to provide to folks um, and the newsroom so the newest stuff that comes out of alg we will post in alg news we will also post it in the newsletter um, to get the word out, we have an advocacy kit. Uh, we have a list of ALG events, which is uh, once we really spin up our uh, in-person and online events, they would be here. And a way to subscribe to our newsletter, uh, a very helpful way to stay in touch about what it is we're doing, um, new resources that are available, and of course, when our grants are going to be released. So that is the entirety of ALG, but I do want to uh, direct your attention to one really cool thing over here, the accessibility guides under create, because when you're creating stuff, you would want to know about accessibility. Um, we heard a little bit about needing to know about accessibility from here. Uh, shout outs to our, uh, our previous program manager, Tiffany Tiarina, who's over at Kennesaw State uh, for getting started on these accessibility guides. Uh, there's ones on how to make your documents accessible. If you're making a Word document, your PowerPoint slides, how to, if you're making a video or audio, how to make your captioning and your transcripts accessible, and how to make your photos accessible using alternative text. Uh, there's even a way to evaluate OER uh, using an evaluation rubric. You can print that one out if you don't want to fill it out online. And there are open evaluations of um, OER uh, being used in here too. Uh, there's even a video on the accessibility and OER design workshop, a follow along PowerPoint for that video and a follow along Word document because uh, that was also made accessible as well. So really cool accessibility stuff that is in OpenALG, but we link it directly uh, from our resources right here on accessibility guides. Uh, we won't have much time to talk about accessibility today. It's uh, a huge turnout. We've got a lot of projects, um, but yeah, if you have any accessibility questions, please be sure to go to resources and accessibility guides because that will help you out so much. Uh, I am going to stop sharing my screen. Going to open this up for uh, questions as I go back to the PowerPoint. And uh, I will also be checking the chat to make sure. OK, yeah, so I, I hear just about to mention that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, so Tyler Mazogi says, can you guys help with USG's use of D2L policies? They're rightfully rigid, but that creates some hurdles when using nonprofit resources. So if you wind up with something that's a barrier to implementing uh, your materials, please get in contact with us. 
uh, so that we can talk this out. The, the weird thing about D2L policies, they are implemented differently at each institution. So most of the time, if you're looking at open materials that are made accessible, that's a little bit different than making sure that the website that hosts them has um, you know, a, an official document that websites have to have to certify that it is um, you know, WCAG 2.0 AA standards, right? And so when you start implementing these things, it gets a little complicated, but it's gonna vary by institution. Um, whoever is making the approvals in D2L is going to have a say in that. And if they have any questions, if they're like, I have never worked with open educational resources before, I just got here, please send them my way. Um, we can we can work that out for sure. Um, any other questions? Oh, thank you. All right. Uh, the next thing that we are going to do uh, is whoa. In here, I am looking at this. Nikita, uh, the agenda is not lining up uh, exactly with the. Are we taking a break? <laughs> oh, oh, I'm so sorry. You know what? You're right. You're right. We we decided that we would do questions because we wanted to get through the um the the we wanted to end it early rather than try to take a break in the middle. So we promised you a break, but unfortunately, we actually didn't plan for that because we're trying to get you out early. So okay, we apologize yeah. for that inconsistency. Sorry about that. We were making a lot of edits uh, right That's up true. until this point. Uh, yeah. We're kind of, we kind of operate like a Formula One team. Like every single race, we have new developments that we are gathering data on and we are uh, getting out there. So uh, sometimes there are some wrinkles in that plan. Uh, so let's go on uh, to talk about transformation grants. We wanted to break these up a little bit because there are so many projects. So we did our research grants and our continuous improvement grants took a little break, did our walking tour. Now we're gonna go to transformation grants. Um, so uh, you will be unmuting at this point uh, to talk about your stuff. So uh, get ready for that. Uh, our first uh, person is from Augusta University. Uh, the project lead is Juan Manuel Ramiro Diaz. Oh, hello everybody. I'm Juan Manuel Ramiro Diaz from Augusta University. I see some members of my team over there, Dr. Karen Wiles and Dr. Christina Wilson. There is also uh, Dr. Georgios Kalifatidis that couldn't come uh, join us, neither uh, Dr. Soma Mukopadhyay, but they are also into. So uh, we are really excited, actually, and thank you so much for ILG to for give us this uh, second, uh, second grant. Uh, we're very excited because the first grant produced a, a really nice uh, product. We got a, an a, a histology atlas for students from Anatomy and Physiology 1. We just started this semester in, uh, applying this new product, to re and we replaced pretty much the, the for profits for profit uh, manual the students were using. There was a great acceptance from the students. They love it. They give us great comments, and we... Um, preliminary data that we are getting seems like that they are is, is, is at least as good as, as as the previous that we had. So this second grant that we are planning to make is actually to replace the, the, the manual for anatomy and physiology too. And we expect to have an equally good product. And we are, we are really, really, really excited for this. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, let's hear from Andrea Allen at Clayton State about the Survey Forensic Science Project. Hi again. Um, is my camera working? No. Okay. Hi again. <laughs> okay. I'm at Clayton State. <laughs> I'm doing, um, yeah, I'm also doing a transformation grant, um, getting rid of the expensive textbook, and I'm looking to make an open access reader. And like with the other project with American government, I'm looking to do what I can with AI to really make this an engaging an engaging reader and possibly make some ancillaries for it. Um, time permitting, so thank you. Thank you. Uh, Benjamin Buckley from Clayton, would you like to talk about the Critical Thinking Project? Yes, hello everyone. Um, I am Benjamin Buckley. My teammates are Sanjay Lal, who is here with us today, and also Alex Hall, 
and Todd Yank. And we are making our critical thinking classes zero cost materials. Um, we teach a bazillion sections of critical thinking and the textbook prices just keep going up. So this is gonna be a very high impact project. So we're very happy to be here. Thank you. Thanks so much. Um, Tate Holbrook from the College of Coastal Georgia. Hey, I'm Tate Holbrook. I'm here with Dave Stasick as well. We're part of a team of other biology faculty and our Office of eLearning. Uh, we are replacing an expensive commercial textbook with OpenStax uh, for our introductory biology sequence and also adopting uh, adaptive courseware and developing some ancillary resources to help support students. Thanks so much. Uh, Dewitt Abera uh, from Fort Valley. OK, I'm here. Hello. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yep, we can. Sure, OK. So my name is Dawit Abera, and I'm from Fort Valley State University. Uh, we are very thankful that ALG presented this grant. Uh, we will work on project number 708. Uh, courses are listed on the PowerPoint. Uh, they are statistics for business and economics, and the other one is linear algebra. Uh, I'm working with Dr. Ishwari Kunwar, Dr. Fisaha Gabra Mikhail, and Dr. Sanjeev Arora all from Fort Valley State University. Uh, so we're going to make uh, affordable materials available. In other words, we use uh, open educational resources, uh, especially the four open educational resources that I want to mention. We go we're going to use heavily the open stacks. Uh, we'll use my open math. We'll use Libre text and the fourth one is lyrics L Y R Y X. Uh, so using this, we'll have uh, the content, everything ready for the course. Uh, so that's what we will be doing this summer uh, this on this grant. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Catherine Pinzon from uh, Georgia Gwinnett College with a multi institution project, including Middle Georgia State. Hi, everyone. Um, Kathy's not here today, but I am. Um, my name is Tanya oh, yeah. George. Yeah, sorry. My name is Tanya D. George. Um, and I'm working with Kathy and Abby Noble from Middle Georgia State University. And we are in the process of trying to write a uh, online open textbook for pre-calculus and college algebra um, using inquiry learning as kind of our basis for the activities and problems that we create for the book. Very cool. Um, OK, Rebecca Flynn, you have, I think, the first three institution grant project. Um, between Georgia Gwinnett College, UGA, and Kennesaw State. Yeah, we'll see how it goes, but we're really excited and looking forward to it. So we have all in all 11 members. Uh, Stephanie Denny, um, a partner of mine, is on this call as well. I think Rebecca Cooper uh, is checking in too. Um, so as we said, three institutions. So Georgia Gwinnett has worked with KSU before, and you'll see the report. It showed a 20% improvement in retention rates for our composition courses that were changed. So that's been fantastic. We're looking to duplicate similar retention pass rate increases with this new iteration. So we're focusing on our co-rec courses, 1101 and 999, which is the sport class for um, first year composition. And as a Hispanic learning institution, we're looking to um, change curriculum so it speaks to our diverse student population. It's a no cost uh, course. Um, and uh, as I mentioned before, it's going to be modifying two classes that work together, the COREC 1101 and 999. Very neat. Um, Amy Potter from Georgia Southern. Hi everyone, um, my name is Amy Potter and uh, with my colleague Dr. Rob Yarborough and Dr. Helen Roscoe, we are taking a look at our uh, Area B World Regional Geography course and seeking to make it no cost. Um, we want to utilize an already existing open ac access textbook but create um, uh, the sustainable supplemental materials because uh, geography can date real fast. So um, that's what we're going to be working on this year. Thank you so much for this opportunity. We appreciate it. And thank you. Uh, Mamie Lynn uh, from Georgia Southern. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Maymay. I'm a faculty member at Georgia Southern. 
Um, with the help from our librarian, Nikki Kenenrik, um, I will be transforming the introduction to physical geography course to adopt the OERs. And this is my first ALG grant. So I am really excited about the opportunity and look forward to see the positive impact that this will have on our students. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Nalanda Roy from Georgia Southern. Anyone from Nalanda's team here? They are uh, seasoned pros at this, uh, so it, it is very possible that they attended last time and they <laughs> do not have to be here this time. We'll just check in with them. Um, Kelvin Rosier uh, and your team from Georgia State. Kelvin, you're muted. Sorry. You've got to start all over. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. I do apologize. Uh, <laughs> I'm Kelvin Rozier from Georgia State University, and what we're looking to do is to adopt an OER for our calculus sequence of courses, um, which is just ridiculously priced at this point. Um, so our goal is to provide some additional materials with regard to calculus, um, PowerPoint presentation, videos, and so forth uh, to accompany the OER that we um, eventually choose. Thanks so much. All right, um, Dahu from uh, Kennesaw State. Thank you, Jeff. Hello, everyone. This is Dahu from KSU Civil and the Environmental Engineering Department. Uh, in this project, we have all the full-time geotechnic faculty on board, Dr. Jay Kwang, so I believe he's here today, and uh, Dr. Adam Kepner. Uh, this is our first ALG project, so really appreciate this opportunity, and we are very excited for this. Uh, specifically, uh, we plan to develop no cost to student learning material for our geotechnic engineering lab, C3708. Uh, so we plan to create interactive uh, instructional video for laboratory tutorials and also update our lab menu uh, accordingly to improve the student learning. So I would also like to see in our department, so we have around 800 undergraduate students and the geotechnic lab is the required course uh, for all the students in our department. So this will definitely benefit all the, all the students here. And we also want to uh, develop uh, uh, materials that can benefit all the other students in Georgia, as well as the students around the world. Thank you. And thank you. Um, Robert Kaiser from Kennesaw. Um, hi, Jeff. This is Parisa Puyan. I Hello. Think uh, Robert has communicated we have um, the same uh, yep. uh, exact time department meeting. I'm actually a faculty member at Industrial Systems Engineering at KSU. Uh, with two wonderful faculty members, we are developing two courses for industrial engineering technology as well as industrial and systems engineering. So um, we are very excited. This is my first time and thank you for the opportunity. And this is going to be the topic of work measurement at no cost. And we believe that it's going to be very beneficial to our students. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, how about Yi Li uh, from Kennesaw? Uh, hello, this is uh, Yi and also uh, uh, sometimes I'm, I go by Joy. Um, uh -huh. I'm uh, I'm with uh, uh, four other team members, um, and uh, we are in the Department of Software Engineering and uh, Game Development, uh, specifically the program of uh, computer uh, game design and development. So each of us will take uh, uh, in in charge of one of the course uh, that's listed there for transformation. Uh, we're going to take the existing course. Uh, um, um, evaluate the uh, somehow up, uh, outdated uh, materials and replace them with uh, no cost online materials. Uh, as you may know, we it's it's kind of harder for us uh, the game design and development um, uh, major to find uh, uh, OER uh, online uh, at all. So we are trying uh, to. Uh, trying our best to uh, try to replace them with uh, open source, um, maybe not all the existing books, um, uh, but with all the uh, internet uh, things to make it more uh, up to date. And uh, we are also going to uh, uh, make use of the LG fund to provide some um, commonly shared uh, equipment, such as uh, um, the um, 
uh, some some of the VR uh, mobile devices uh, so that the student can um, be relieved from the, the financial burden. And thank you so much for the opportunity. Thanks so much as well. Uh, Sumit uh, Chakravati from uh, K KSU uh, has a dual institution uh, project. Uh, Sumit or your team, are, are you here? Okay, uh, let's go next to uh, Insyok Song from uh, University of Georgia. Okay, can, can you hear me? Yep. Okay, yeah. great. So, uh, yeah, the, my name is Insyok Song. I'm an I think associate professor of astronomy at physics and uh, the astronomy department at UGA. Okay. And then we are a team of five faculty members and uh, with more than 10 student members currently. And then with my colleague and then co-lead of this AELG grant, Dr. Nandana Veliveria, we started a project with a really large grant aim of enhancing STEM education. And then this ALG round, I think 25 grant is more specific to the subset of this large the project. So they focused more on astronomy side. So with the previous round 14 ALG grant, the astronomers at my department tried to adopt an open text astronomy textbook. And then we created a bunch of, but then I think we created everything new, like homework, exams, and the lecture note and whatnot. But we found out that actually the quality and the quantity of the illustrations in open text textbook was so limited, and then we could not go on. And also that actually for the astronomy, the point of view is specific. The astronomy concept are fundamentally three-dimensional and including commercial textbook illustrations are limited to the 2D static. So we, I think realizing this and then advent of new immersive technology like the virtual reality, augmented reality, extended reality, we found that there actually are this adapting this immers immersive technology to create scientifically accurate immersive, engaging, and visually stunning 3D model can actually really boost and then also help adaptation of the open text, the textbook. So we identified about two dozens of suitable astronomical concept that will actually greatly enhance the student in it at the understanding of the underlying concept. And with this ALG around 25, we tried to build five models Okay. And then eventually at the end of this project, we will release every model. They created 3D models and then including all those, the intermediate script. And then by the way, that actually we are creating this model by using the modern game engines like the Blender, Unity, and the Unreal Engine by the undergraduate student so that they are receiving experiential learning at the credit. So that actually with this, uh, the eventual models will be openly the uh, released to the publicly as an open education resources. And I want to actually just the, send out the open invitation to any any one of these, I think, fellow the educators. So because our main focus is actually, although this around 25, the, uh, the LG grant is specific to the astronomy, our larger projects are actually handling many different STEM areas, like the veterinary medicine, psychology, and whatnot. So that, are, and, and then we are especially that are the interested in seeking some the outside, outside of the UGA collaborator, especially the, someone from the minority serving institute. Then I think we can actually address the equity issues, and then we can we can attack the larger pro, I think program. So. What I will do is, if it is okay with you, Jeff, and then Nakit, <laughs> then I will set post the uh, the project web web page on the chat window, and I invite everyone that actually just come and then visit our our website. And then remember, this astro, this specific ALG round twenty five is a subset of this big grant. Yeah, uh, thanks very much. Uh, be sure to post that. Um, also, I think uh, we have 
we already have a game design uh, group in here too. And here's yeah. here's a group using Unreal and Unity. That's really neat. All right. Um, yeah. Uh, so uh, Dr. Song is going to be posting that. Um, in the meantime, uh, let's hear from Suzanne. I know that you've been connected to the Continuous Improvement Grant projects, but this is a new one. Yes, thank you, Jeff. I'm joined today by my team members, Nathan Thacker, Shelby Dickerson, Mark Alucci, Richard Hubbard, Bill Ellenberger, and Nick Llewellyn. This is our third transformation grant. With the first ones, we completely redesigned our general chemistry sequence, and we found that the changes were so successful that we are now doing it again with our organic sequence. Very cool. All right, uh, so that is uh, all of the projects now. We have introduced our research folks, our continuous improvement grant folks, and transformation grant folks. So thank you so much. Uh, this is yet again an energizing group of folks that just makes us super excited um, about seeing uh, where all of this goes. Now, we heard a couple of things in the poll about OER and Creative Commons. Uh, so I wanted to go through just a little bit of that. Um, if you have any questions about the asynchronous uh, training materials that um, folks have completed, please reach out to us about that as well. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to run down what OER are, um, just real quick. Um, some of you, this is going to be a, a very easy review, uh, but for some of you, this is new. Why do we do something called open and not just something called free educational resources? Well, it's not just about having things free to use, although that's important. Uh, students do not have to pay an extra cost, a hidden cost um, for their resources when you have open educational resources. Uh, they don't have to subscribe to things, create an account, share their data, uh, have their stuff tracked or sold. Um, it is just there for them to use. Uh, it's flexible for um, all of you who are teaching because when you access an open educational resource, you will see an open license on it. That open license will allow you to customize those resources. Uh, so not just share them as is, but make them super relevant for your students. And this isn't just about textbooks, although some of you are authoring or customizing textbooks, and that's great. Um, you can also create video sets like the Georgia Highlands folks are, and audio like the audiobooks uh, that we are now uh, piloting at UNG. And of course, creating uh, images, uh, 3D models, all that stuff is part of open education. And because they are authored by experts like you and shared by experts like you, they are then adopted by other experts like you and customized for their students as well. Uh, so you wind up with a kind of a, a cyclical sharing of better and better resources as time goes on. Now for Creative Commons licenses, it may seem like a lot at first, but really you just start with one building block. And that one building block on a Creative Commons license is attribution. The idea is that you are giving folks permission to customize resources, to make new stuff out of your stuff, so long as they attribute the original work. This is required for um, just about every open educational resource out there. If you've created a series of photographs and you want to put them into the public domain with absolutely no restrictions, that's fine. Um, but usually you want to keep that attribution so you can keep the history of the resource as it goes back. Uh, so if someone's created a concept of biology for UGA students, well, where did that come from? Uh, because maybe you're at a different institution than UGA and you may want to see what it started out as. Attribution allows you to see that, uh, to see the credit given for it and to go back to that original resource. Now, there are other ones you can add on to a Creative Commons license. So you'll often see not just CC BY, but CC BY NC SA. What do those mean? Well, NC is non-commercial. 
that means that if you're making stuff with the resource that's NC licensed, you can't use it for commercial use. You can't profit off of it. Can you um, get something printed out by a print shop in the most affordable way and then share those with your students? Yes, for sure. Um, can your bookstore share these at cost, uh, at cost to them without markup and stuff like that? Yeah, they can. But if you have a non-commercial license, you can't go and make money off of that resource. Um, share alike means that you are sharing that openness along. Um, so if you've created something with a Creative Commons share alike license and you are remixing that into your thing, you now put that under a share alike license too. So you're passing that openness along to the next person and it, they, they all pay it forward that way. Now, that's cool, but it does involve a little bit more open licensing knowledge on the part of anyone who's going to adopt those resources. So that's the only thing you need to keep in mind um, with share alike is, will it be compatible with folks who um, take a look at it once, once it's there? Usually just fine. Um, no derivatives is not one we tend to use um, in education. And the reason why we don't use it in education is because every group of students is different. Every institution is different. Every course taught at an institution is different by the instructor. So um, you would want to be able to customize these resources and make them relevant to your students and not just share the thing as is from a different institution. Uh, the ones that I, I tend to use a lot, although they are very open. Uh, let's say that you get something from MIT OpenCourseWare uh, that was created at MIT. Your students uh, who are going into an introductory engineering uh, course may have very different needs than MIT students going into an introductory engineering course. It could have to do with their degree programs, their prerequisites. Uh, you would want to be able to customize that resource and not just share it as is, um, as created from the students from before. That's why we do, uh, we tend to avoid no derivative licenses in Creative Commons. Um, you can, though, like if you're an artist and you want to share stuff under a Creative Commons license and it's dear to you and you don't want somebody remixing it, a no derivatives license is something that you would want to do. Um, also with research data, you, you may want to keep that research data under a no derivatives license because you want to keep the data and the analysis as it is perfectly fine. But with education, because we want to keep things customized for folks, we tend to avoid the no derivatives license. And yeah, the open cycle tends to. Um, uh, it, it, it's not as simple as it all just goes back to the beginning of the cycle, but as teams are creating resources, as they're shared openly by you and by Affordable Learning Georgia, we're hoping that more faculty adopt open resources, uh, pass them along, uh, create new revisions of them, and now they are either improved or customized over there. They may be adopted by the folks back at the beginning. Oh man, you created this video set for the thing that we made? That's amazing. Here, we'll, we'll do that. We'll add some things onto it. Uh, and then new teams are revising and remixing those materials and sharing them out. So there's value in just having free resources for students, increasing access to materials across the board. But there's also value in making them open and customizable. And that's why uh, OER tends to be a really good option for Affordable Learning Georgia. So that's a quick rundown of OER. Uh, there's plenty of stuff on how to find them, uh, what to think about when you're creating, how this stuff interacts with copyright that I can't really get into in a, in a session like this. But if you have more questions, first of all, check out the ELG site. We've got plenty of stuff there. But if you run into anything that uh, you and your team and your champions um, are just befuddled by, reach out to us too. Uh, we can totally provide help or even find somebody uh, who can help outside of uh, our offices. So that was just a quick uh, look at OER because there's we had some demand for going over what open is and we had some demand for going over accessibility. Accessibility is best looked at in those accessibility guides as we shared on the ALG website. Uh, we're going to go into the procedures next 
this used to be a lot longer than it is now because we used to do the um, service level agreements before the kickoff meeting, but like mm, right in between there. And then once the kickoff meeting happened, then we'd send them out. And that helped in that all of you understood what a service level agreement was before the service level agreement went out. But it did not help with getting projects started because that meant it delayed uh, when your institutions could sign the documents and that delayed when the uh, Board of Regents could sign the documents and therefore it created a lot of project delays. We're trying to minimize that as much as possible. So that SLA stuff is kind of out of the way, done through email, um, and we've moved on to the next part of it. Uh, if you're not a project lead and you're like, what the heck are you talking about with this SLA stuff? Ask your project lead. They have been involved in this. Um, but yeah, you will be added to our listserv. Uh, this is for all ALG grantees, uh, and it's mostly for announcements. Uh, at one point, we made this listserv thinking, ah, oh, this will be a discussion hub for everyone uh, sharing their ideas. The problem is that uh, folks do not like having their email inboxes uh, crammed with a whole bunch of different emails about somebody's project. And often what happened was someone would share some personal information um, that was related to their grant project or uh, salary or something like that. And I'd be like, oh my goodness, that, that probably should not be shared out with all the grantees. Um, so it's more an announcement place now. Uh, and if we put anything in brackets on the subject heading, be sure to pay attention to that. If you're a past grantee and you see that there's an email that comes from me talking about a deadline and you go, oh my goodness, I have a deadline. Well, no, it's just intended for current grantees. You're fine, you know, that type of thing. Just be sure to check the subject line. Um, and yours would definitely say R25 grantees if I just need to get into contact with you. That hardly ever happens. It's usually I'm going to all current grantees uh, with an announcement because we keep all of those dates uniform for everybody. If you have any personal questions, uh, any questions about your particular project, um, questions about uh, interacting with the grants or business office, let us know um, at jeff.galant at usg.edu and nakita.afaha at usg.edu. And that'll be uh, super helpful to us. So if you're going to send an email about your project, be sure to reference your grant number. Um, that one is a three digit number if you've got a transformation grant. And if you don't, then it's an M followed by um, a three digit number or RG followed by a three digit number uh, for research or for uh, what used to be mini grants, but are now continuous improvement grants. But we wanted to keep that index uniform uh, to make sure that we can put everything together. Uh, the reason why is not because we want to treat your group like a number. Uh, the reason why is because folks like um, Dr. Ellenberger, who has been on many projects, uh, if, the, if she said, hey, I have a question about my project, I'd have to be like, which one? OK, there's the one on on this course and that one is titled this and therefore I have to go to this round and then I have to go into this semester to find the final report. Uh, if I know which project you're talking about from the beginning with that number, it's so much easier. Um, if you give me a number from uh, your institution, uh, like a six digit chart field number or their own number that they have affixed to that grant project, I will have no idea and I will have to just kind of go searching for it. The uh, giving us your grant number when you're asking about uh, your particular project will help us get to the information as quickly as we can. Um, we're, we're really just trying to make sure that we uh, speed up as many of the paperwork processes as possible. And so that's why we definitely need your grant number when you're uh, sending a question about that stuff. Now, invoices are another thing. Your institution is invoicing us for the first half uh, once the service level agreement is signed by everybody, including your institution and the Board of Regents. Once the Board of Regents gets that stuff signed, it is done through the legal department. We then send it over um, to your grants or business office say this is fully executed, it's attached. And at that point, they will invoice us for the first half of the award amount they will then have that money to use for the grant project. Um, when we're asking for an invoice, 
That is not the same thing as an expense report. Sometimes we receive uh, something that someone thinks is an invoice, and it's this big long table of everything that happened in your grant account. That's not it. Uh, it's official letterhead. It's one page. It's asking us for a particular amount of money. It's referencing uh, the grant number, and it is by your institution. Uh, so if you personally invoice us, we can't do anything with that. Uh, it is uh, just by your institution. Uh, so yeah, your institution invoices us. If your institution has a foundation, like a research foundation, be sure that it is not coming from them. Uh, it has to come from the institution. Uh, in the same way that we have a company listed as a supplier, if we were to order five office chairs, um, we have the name and the particular number for an institution attached to our service level agreement. And the invoice needs to come from the same place. So if um, we have a service level agreement with Georgia Tech, the invoice has to come from Georgia Tech and not the research foundation, even though their research foundation is quite big. Um, so yeah, just something that makes things go faster. Uh, because if we submit something and then all of a sudden we find out that in the address, oh, it's actually to this foundation, uh, you know, we'll usually get it from accounts payable at that point, which will know exactly what's going on. Then we have to send it back and we're like, can we get another invoice? They send another invoice and it, it takes a little bit longer because of that. Uh, so just make sure that the, in the invoice comes from the institution. For some of you, this has already happened. Uh, your grants and business offices are usually very up to date on this stuff. Um, but if they are, uh, if they haven't received funding yet for a while and you're wondering why, it is because uh, at some point we have not received an invoice or we have not been able to pay those invoices because of the fully executed SLA being required. So that is all of that. Uh, so ALG will send our invoice to accounts payable. Accounts payable will send it electronically, that payment, to the institution. Uh, it's sent through ACH. It's an electronic transaction. Sometimes those transactions get lumped into one. So it, it comes from the system office and it's just, here's a system office transaction and it's like $200,000. And it's like, well, where's your ALG uh, uh, payments, we can't find it. And so we go and we look up the date uh, that it, we made the payment request and say, check around this date. And usually what will happen is, yeah, they'll find one from the system office. Here's one for a big STEM grant. Here's the ALG one for uh, number 692. And so all of a sudden, there it is. Uh, so that's that's why if your offices can't find it, but we thought we paid it, um, that's why it's happened is the system office sends a whole bunch of them in one payment. So uh, we are now going to go uh, to Nikita and she's going to take over for a second to ask a couple of quiz questions. This is this is a new thing. I think it's really neat. Um, so Nikita, uh, go right ahead. Thank you so much, Jeff. I bet you guys didn't think we were going to throw in a pop quiz, but I'm new to the team and uh, that, that's what you get. <laughs> So um, what we're going to do is, Jeff, you will stop sharing your screen and I will start sharing mine. But while Jeff is doing that, everyone, please look inside um, your window here for Teams and you will see a poll everywhere button in the uh, controls at the top. So click on your, your poll everywhere uh, button. Uh, mine is next to view and you're going to see that it's going to be waiting for me to begin the poll everywhere uh, presentation. So um, let's see. Let's see, making sure. Yeah, Jeff is not. He stopped sharing. Great. And uh, if anyone having trouble finding that poll everywhere button, please raise your hand. So we'll just pause for a moment. Make sure. No worries, Joseph. OK. All right. So um, let's see. So the poll everywhere button should be um, in the same group with your chat and also where you can raise your hand or react. It should say poll everywhere there. Oh, OK, so if you're not in the Teams app, perhaps. OK, 
in that case, I will also share with you a link to the to the quiz. We'll do that as well. Okay. So Jeff, uh, Jeff helped me there with the chat there. Thank you. Some people, some people are sharing it as well. Okay. Yeah, Clement, we had the same idea. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I'm a, all right. So let me go ahead and send also the link in the chat so that you can participate outside of Teams, and uh, we we can definitely take care of that as well. So let me just grab the link. Uh, There we go. All right, no worries everyone. If you can't find the pull everywhere button, you can join from the link that I'm pasting here in the chat. And I'll go ahead and start the poll, start the uh, the quiz so that you'll have something to, to uh, play. And, um, Also, now I can share my screen as well because I want you to see the the results of the quiz as we go. All right, so it's only just a, it's just a few questions, so uh, it won't take us too long. But hopefully, everyone was paying attention. And for those of you who are just starting with the poll everywhere, if you're in the app, it's asking for a name, so it's not anonymous. But you don't have to use your real name. We are going to have a leaderboard because we want to see who answers the questions and who has a winning winning uh, answer. So you can put in a, a fake name, but uh, we do want you to have some type of identifier. So we're seeing my my screen here. And so as I go through the slides, you will have 10 seconds to answer the question. And um, we can pause, of course, to talk about why the answer is correct and things like that. But this is such really important information, of course, for navigating your project. I know we're playing a little game, but this is some good information for your project navigating it. And um, we want to make sure that you are um, able to get all of your questions answered regarding it. Okay, let's start. So the first question, your timer hasn't started yet and you haven't had an option to answer yet. That's how it'll go. You'll see the question first and then the next screen will show the answers and you will uh, choose your answer. So take a look at the question here when you send an email to ALG about some aspect of your project, whether it's about your plans or funding for SLA signatures, please be sure to reference your end. You now have 10 seconds to choose an answer, please. It didn't start, it didn't start, did it? I'm seeing 10. <laughs> yeah, let me go to the next. Okay, because. Oh, people answered. <laughs> they answered, okay, the 10 seconds went by that fast. I completely missed it. Wow, okay. All right, so. We definitely got uh, some good answers. Um, and so great number is indeed the correct answer. And Jeff explained why, because of um, all the different ways we reference our projects. Your grant office reference your projects by a different way. You reference your projects by a different way, perhaps by the course number, your team members. Your grants office is looking at PO numbers, SLAs. Um, out in the public, sometimes your ALG champion, you may hear a little bit about that. They will reference your project by rounds number, but when it comes to the official um, you know, uh, reference for your project in dealing with our office, you want to always reference the grant number. So three digit number for uh, the transformation grant, an M plus a three digit number for the continuous improvement grant, and an RG plus a three digit number for your research grant. Please do pay attention when you're submitting questions, invoicing, anything, basically add your grant number. So uh, we had a few people who had kind of incorrectly there, but we have some of those on the leaderboard. We're doing good. All right, any questions about that? So the poll is full. Hmm, interesting. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, it, it looks like maybe this version of it doesn't allow everyone. Um, if that's the case and you wind up with the poll being full, uh, just answer it in your head. Uh, we're not we're not playing for uh, awards today, uh, so yeah. Yeah. Indeed, and I do apologize. It's probably a setting perhaps for the limitations of people, number of people that can participate. Um, but we're on question number two now. And uh, now that your project is 
your project's SLA is fully executed um, and your institution's business or grants office should do what? So here are the answers. We'll have those who are able to participate. We apologize if you've gotten excluded. Please participate. Except you only had 10 seconds, so. Yep, and it already hit it. <laughs> All right, so we'll go on with the answer here. And we got quite a few people who understood that um, your grants office should send the first of two invoices for half of your award amount. Um, and you um, particularly, Jeff, if you could just speak a little bit about why this is important and how this works as far as the payment, um, the breaking of the payment real quick. Yeah, uh, so all of our grants have a 50% upfront and 50% at the end distribution. So um, your institution's business and grants office will be sending the initial invoice at first, and that will have half of the award amount at the beginning. Now you on your end might see the full amount of the entire grant. That is because they are running a, a line of credit against the um, two invoices that we have because we gave them uh, the notification of award that this thing is happening. Um, that is really on the institution. Some institutions can do that, others cannot. Uh, but yeah, uh, they should be sending us the initial invoice at the beginning once the SLA is signed. And because of the number of hands that the invoices and SLAs have to touch, these signatures, signatures and then um, the offices in which they have to go, you can imagine there can be quite a delay in, in these things happening. So we will need you to, even though you're not the specific person sending the invoice, we need you to be aware of the process so that you can continue to prod each other in your team and your grants office, just to ensure we're all making um, progress towards getting these things done. Because in the end, the longer you take to get your invoice sent out, um, the longer the payment gets back. So it's something that's important to pay attention to. All right, so uh, 50 percent, uh, 50 percent, uh, 50, only 50 people can participate in the poll. So we apologize, everyone who is not getting um, able to answer the quiz. And Jeff, we have a question in the in the chat there. Yeah, two people still have their hands up. Oh, sorry, sorry, you're right. Double check. We'll get to this question as well, Jeff, if you can help with that question. And then for those who have their hands up, uh, do we if you have any questions or issues that we need to address at the moment, please, please unmute and let me know. Yeah. Uh, so either Crystal or Devalina, um, we see your hands raised. It may just be because you raised your hands that you weren't able Earlier. to see. But let us know. And Jeff has answered that question there in the chat. So let's check our leaderboards. OK, so we have uh, <laughs> Antioch as the number one there and uh, by just a few points there, too. So OK. All right, so moving on to the third and final question for this section. Um, where are we going to find your grant number? Where is your grant number? So the first 50 people within the 10 seconds to answer. Let's see what you got. All right, thanks for your participation there. And the answer is 100% of those who are able to do it on your SLA. Honestly, if there's any question you have about your project related to the business office, related to what you're being expected to do, related, it's on the SLA. So um, you're welcome to send Jeff and I emails. We are always, obviously always welcome to, um, uh, we'll give you the answer that we, if you need, but um, your SLA is definitely a first point of check for most anything that you're looking for, what you've agreed to do in your project is in the SLA as well. And by the time we get to the midpoint and by the time we get to the final um, final report, you may need to reference that SLA again, just to make sure you've met all the requirements there that are in the agreement. So just keep that in mind. And our winner, our winner, yay. <laughs> Very good, everyone. You see the winners there. So um, perhaps uh, the next time we institute this after we've kind of this pilot uh, we may have a prize, but um, you'll, of course, have to apply for a new grant in order to to get the prize. All right. So what we'll do now, Jeff, I am going to um, stop sharing and turn it back over to you. You all, we have one more section that has another very um, important information for you. And um, thank you, Jeff. 
And uh, so we want you to just pay attention for a few more minutes here while we wrap that part up. And there might be another quiz, just saying. All right. So the last part is going to be about reporting. Um, first of all, if you are a transformation grantee, you're going to be submitting a status report each semester uh, to show us how you're doing and make sure that there aren't any um, critical things that we're, we're missing that are happening in your project. Now, these are always available on the Grantee Information Center uh, webpage. They include multiple choice questions and short paragraph questions. This is not a big narrative document. This is a check in to make sure that everything's on track. Um, so we ask for your information, the proposal information, just to make sure that everything is lined up. Um, who are your team members? Have there been changes in personnel? Uh, your semester ends then. What's your final semester to make sure that we all understand that? Is it overall on track? Um, which phase of implementation are you in? Uh, the list of materials. So let's say that you have a couple of uh, open materials that you're creating or a website that's hosting all of them. That's great. You can just post the link. If you have a giant list, do not worry about it. You're not going to have to put that on the online form. That's a Herculean effort. Um, just send it up, uh, send it to us in a Word document, uh, which would be a lot easier. You just paste them all in there and send them over. Um, and then just say that you've emailed me. I can attach that Word document to your response and then we're fine. Um, the status of your review, if you are in a review process, the status of creating any new materials, if you are creating new materials, um, how's the course redesign going, if you're uh, doing a big overhaul on your course, uh, any other work that's going on. Um, and especially we want to make sure uh, that we know if members of your team have changed. We don't have to edit that over here. Uh, when you submit the final report, we'll have the final makeup of your team because you'll be reporting that. But we want to make sure that we involve folks in the conversation if you have anybody new. Um, any changes to uh, the impact of your project? Now, if this means that, well, we expected to affect 80 students in the fall and 79 were affected, so we have to tell you that, that's not a problem. Um, if, it, if it's near the estimate, totally fine. Uh, if it's something big, like we just lost five sections of this course and now we are affecting only this many students, or um, we've added in five new faculty members who would love to participate, and therefore we are affecting this many more students. Like, let us know about that type of stuff. Um, any other questions is just a catch all uh, for the semester status report. Now, all of you have to submit a final report. Um, this is at the end of the final semester of the project. It's always available again on the Granting Information Center page, and it's one survey that gives pathways. So you go to this one uh, page and then it will say, you know, which kind of grant are you? If it's transformation, you go over here. If it's continuous improvement, you go over here. If it's research, you go over there. Um, so it'll always be the same website when you're submitting the final thing. Um, be sure to check the Grantee Information Center uh, for the link to the final report. Um, for transformation, you will need your Word document that you filled out. That's uh, the one that's under the template for your final report. Um, any data that you've had uh, that you want to submit, uh, including your, um, your, your measures that you've proposed to do, your qualitative and quantitative measures. Um, any syllabi, uh, and a, a zip can work well for this to just make them one file if you have multiple courses. Uh, if you have the same course and multiple instructors, just submit one per course. We don't need everybody's syllabus to say, hey, I'm this person, I'm this person. We just need a, a syllabus that gives us an idea of how those materials are implemented in the classroom. There's an optional uh, sharing of a photo of your team or class. If you've got that uh, available, uh, we would love to share that in a future report, um, but that is not required. Um, your second invoice, if you have it from your institution, you can totally submit that too, and then that makes it really fast because you've already submitted your final report, and here's the invoice. A lot of folks will need uh, proof that you've submitted your final report before they even create an invoice. That's OK. You don't have to have it here. It's optional. 
And if you have a continuous improvement or a research grant uh, proposal, when your final report comes in, you're going to have your Word document and you will uh, link your materials or you can uh, send your materials to us. Um, you're not going to need another data file. Quantitative and qualitative measures uh, for continuous improvement grants are not required. Um, but if you have materials for your research grants, please do uh, share them. So that's, uh, yeah, for sure. So if you have a small file that you can send for all materials, totally fine. You can uh, you can send them in the final report, but there is a file size limit. If that doesn't work, just send them over in a Google folder, Dropbox folder, SharePoint, something that will allow us to uh, download the files and then share them out. Um, yeah, uh, you can also, of course, host them on a campus website and then I can get to them from there in the final report if you just link it over. Um, you can attach them in an email, but there also are file size limits there too. We don't really care so much about the method in which the materials get to us. So we will be hosting them after that. We'll create the metadata and stuff like that. So the upcoming reporting deadlines. Don't worry about spring. Uh, that's for May 13th. Uh, things will be coming out saying, hey, the deadline is for this. It's not for round 25, and we'll be sure to clarify that um, on any emails that you get. The first reporting deadline for folks, and that will just be for um, those who are transformation grant uh, teams, will be a semester status report at the end of the summer, due on August 16th. Um, that gives you uh, a lot of time to report on what happened over the summer. For some of you, that this may just be when you're just getting started. This might be also a time where you've put aside a lot of time to get work done in the summer. So semester status reports on the summer are super important. And then in the fall, December 20th, 2024, and as these, grant, uh, as these deadlines move forward, the Grantee Information Center has those deadlines, and uh, you can always refer to them there. We'll also have a midpoint check-in meeting, and this will be on Friday, July 5th. It's from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, we're gonna be able to uh, reconvene and regroup. Hold on a minute here. Nikita, is this, did we miss a date? I was gonna say, that I, I, I'm not sure that we meant Friday, July 5th. We'll have to yeah. check on that, I think. Disregard that midpoint check-in for now. We will email you uh, about the real date for that. Um, that one, I think, was too early on for this group. Yeah, we're going to have to see that. OK, um, so <laughs> other than the midpoint check-in, uh, which will be at a different time than July uh, that we will send you, uh, we've gone through a lot about reporting. Um, we're going to do one more little quiz uh, with Nikita yeah. Uh, to check up on what these are. So I'm going to pass it over to her again by stopping sharing. There we go. And, and yeah, we're good. And for those of you who have already used your Poll Everywhere link, um, or as well as the, uh, let me just open this up real quick. Uh, the, the, the button. And so um, I wanted to drop the, the web link in chat one more time, Jeff, if you could oh, do that. I'll copy the link. There we go. Just want to drop that in chat one more time for those of you that might get a chance to participate uh, online. So here we go again, everyone. Um, you should be using probably your same names that you were provided before, that you provided before. And just a few questions again. Um, so 10 seconds of question. A question. Semester status reports are due for... Which one? 10 seconds. And for the first 50 participants. Hmm. So let's see. Let's see how many people got that right. 93%. Very good. OK, so yeah, transformation grant projects. So um, the semester status reports are because your projects are so long and so big and have so many moving parts, the semester status reports are important. And like Jeff mentioned, also in summer, a lot of times that is actually when the semester report will have the most information. Um, the trans the research grant projects, continuous improvement grant projects do not require a semester report, but final reports, of course, are required for all projects. 
Um, next, and so Gus, okay, we have quite a few of those of, of those who are on uh, the leaderboard at the moment. And fake name, yeah, there we go. Uh, let's see, so final report templates and submission instructions are, I love to see the intense intensity on your faces as you're as you're trying to uh, get that done. Okay. So 100% got it right. The Grantee Information Center. So there are two things that you're going to have, uh, you know, at your fingertips. One, the SLA, right? And two, the Grantee Information Center. Very good, everyone. All right. So. Um, and we've got quite a few tied for even fake name. <laughs> They're tied for our uh, leaderboard there. Uh, and the final question here today is the final report deadlines are, 10 seconds. See if this one trips anyone up, let's see. Okay. 100% available in the Grantee Information Center on the LH ALG website. So have you bookmarked that yet? <laughs> oh, Clements, don't give away all of the, uh, the the secrets to the poll, to the quizzes, please. Uh, because yes, the answers were uh, the first choice. Uh, thank you, everyone. Sarah is our winner. Thank you for participating. Um, and Jeff, I will turn it back over to you and we will wrap up early, I think, today. But We'll do that. Thanks. Uh, so one thing to uh, <laughs> to note is that the actual date of the midpoint check in is correct on the request for proposals, which is included on your SLA. It is Friday, January 10th, 2025 from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. That's a lot better than having this in July uh, two months from now. That's not when you have it. It is in January. Um, so uh, after the holiday break, you come back, have a little extra time, and then we can talk. All right. Uh, so let's go back into this PowerPoint. And it always goes back to the first slide. It never remembers where I am, but I am just opening this up to questions. Uh, so if you want to uh, unmute and, and ask a question, that's totally fine. If you want to ask it through chat, that is fine as well. I'm going to put myself on mute to make sure that I'm not talking over this. So here we go. I have a question. How many of you? figured out that the first answer was always the right one. Therefore, we had 100% correct every time. Raise your hand, yes, be admitted, admitted. <laughs> Very good. Or are you raising your hand because you have questions? Sorry, <laughs> that's confusing it. We will be sharing the recording with everyone um, once this gets processed. So. First, we have to make sure that we've got a uh, good uh, transcript for subtitles. Then we put this into YouTube, and then we add the transcripts uh, to it, and then uh, make sure that all of that lines up, and then YouTube processes it. You probably would not want to view this as soon as the link comes out because it would be in standard def, which means that all of the words are going to be kind of blurry and artifacted. Uh, so it takes some time to process that stuff and it's going to be over the weekend. So expect it next next week um, and everyone's going to have access to that, including those of us who could not be here today. And of course, as we're waiting for others who might have questions, Please again, drop them in the chat or unmute and, and uh, share your question. But just remember also that one of the reasons we did the introductions is so that you could hear what other projects are happening. Um, we, we can be kind of a community here to share 
uh, the challenges we're going through and um, um, how to address them. So feel free to contact each other, but also contact Jeff and I directly uh, so that we can answer questions um, not on the listserv is what I mean to say, even though we're creating community, just not through the listserv. I'm also reposting um, Dr. Insio Song's project. Um, and here. Thank you, Jeff. All right, I think it's time to adjourn. Um, soon enough, we'll be sending this to you, uh, sending the recording, some important links, um, and then they will also be on the Granting Information Center along with everything else. So thank you so much. We're really looking forward to uh, an entire year of, of grant projects. Uh, this is a gigantic group full of cool projects. There were so many good ones that we looked at it and said, we can't say no to a ton of these. And it's going to be, uh, so we made a big decision to have a huge round. So thank you all um, for your support, your interest, your expertise. This is gonna be great. Uh, Nikita, anything uh, before we leave? Nope, that is it. You'll advance that last slide so we can give our, our, our official goodbye. And um, or maybe you're already ready, getting ready to do that. <laughs> Thank you all for joining us. The animations were a little bit weird on there. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye bye. Have a good weekend. Thank you. Uh, stopping, uh, stopping the recording now. Hey, Jeff. Uh...